Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Blacklist. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, the main overarching case in this episode involves a dude named Newton who basically attacked this, like, um, what was the, uh, op- was it Optimus? Uh, this, um, uh, Almost like data farming company. Well, they have like data centers, but basically someone kind of calls like a power outage or whatever. Some issues in the system showed up and basically blew the place up, but not before copying some data off of it. And at first it's like, okay, so this all seems like it could be like some, because obviously they also handle a lot of like NSA data. So it's like, oh, someone might be trying to take advantage of that. Which I love, Liz is like, yeah, that seems like the proper, yeah, that'd be the most logical explanation. But she's like, I'm assuming you're going to tell us that we're completely wrong. Which I love Reddington being like, I, I forgot what was the exact wording he said. I forgot what it was. It basically, he was saying like, the reason why he is kind of the way he is, isn't out of like, because he wants to be, it was out of necessity. If people were wrong less often, the happier he would be of like not having to basically like dash their hopes and tell them like, oh, you're completely wrong. This is what's actually going down. But uh, because obviously he thinks this is more of a uh, domestic situation and it turns out to be the case, especially because I, because at first it's like we see um, Newton ended up uh, tracking down one particular person this uh Healy guy and it's like ends up kidnapping him and then p- hooks him up to like this bathtub and it's got speakers and stuff and like that he's like oh I try to warn you you know I try to tell you that um sound could be used as a weapon but he's like and in a kindly sense you didn't believe me you didn't believe it was possible and he proceeds to use sound to kill the dude and when uh pork and um wrestler ends up finding his body later on his eyes are going because like i guess like the sound frequency is like like apparently like it broke like blood vessels and stuff like that it just it ended up fucking up his body bad bleeding from his ears and everything it's like wow and so uh newton ends up ca- kidnapping another lady uh, another person his lady name is libby but then we finally kind of understand because at first it's like okay so he has these um specialized um hearing aids is the word i was looking for um but they were different because at first it's like, oh, he can also turn them off. I was like, that's so interesting. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it makes sense for you to be able to turn it off because you're able to, you know, because you're using sound to kill people. But also I thought like, I thought maybe it was like his thing of like, maybe it gets like hypersensitive sometimes. So he has to turn it off. I thought that's what it was. But it turns out in actuality, he's actually got another uh, disease. Not really. Well, disease is kind of something that kind of could impact quite a few people. Basically, he has like a very like acute hearing and it basically... Basically, this all stems from noise pollution that basically the, the world we live in, like one or two sounds isn't going to be too bad. But the fact is we live in a world where there's so many damn like frequencies and things kind of happening all at once. Whether it's something that we're fully aware of, because obviously like there's certain frequencies your eye, your ears can't hear because some are on a lower free, like they hum lower. So you might not, you don't even realize you're hearing them until like the frequency kind of gets louder. And that's what this stems from. Like the, his um, hearing aids aren't meant to like make it so he he can hear it they were meant to make it so he, he could hear less it becomes a little overwhelming apparently like noise pollution can lead to like depression and all these like different kind of like changes in someone's behavior and park was like oh even lead to murder apparently and so that's what this is all about because basically um basically newton was like like the signaling from the cooling uh the the thing that's used to cool the uh computers that that, that uh cooling um, aspect makes a certain humming noise that he can hear and it doesn't just stop with him plenty of people uh, like i said at least thousands can be potentially having this and i thought it was such an interesting thing like in his situation it's like the reason why he's killing it's not necessarily because he's like oh i'm trying like there's a part of him that's like oh i'm doing this for the cause of like there's so many people that are being affected you you trivialize it to make it seem like oh like um Noise pollution is just something that's just like, ah, oh, that's BS or something. But he's like, no, like noise can be killed, especially when amplified in a certain way. But even him, like he was driven crazy because of it, because it's like it started off low. He didn't really think much of it. And then he got louder. He could not hear it. I uh, couldn't stop hearing it. So he ended up losing his job. He couldn't sleep. It's enough to legitimately drive you insane. Because I think it like uh, the doctor was explaining that basically it affected the chemicals in his brain. and kind of puts him in like a heightened state of almost kind of keeping adrenaline rushing in his body. It's a whole snafu in itself. So it's like 
not like it's justifiable, but you understand where he's coming from and like basically why he's kind of insane like he is. Uh, but it still doesn't, like I said, it's not like he did this, like there's a part of him that, yeah, he was doing this for the greater good, but at the same time, it's like, no, he was just driven insane and he wanted revenge because it's like basically uh, there, the data centers they basically set up, uh, this company ended up ruining his life. And he went after these two people in particular because they're the ones that kind of cut through the red tape and got these built, kind of like ignore the research that was being put into place to be like, oh, see whether or not the frequencies were kind of like all this noise was a good thing or not, like whether there'd be danger to it or not. So he blamed them. So sadly, Healy was killed, but luckily they were able to get to Libya in time. And then we had this moment where he was attacking Park and then Park did this move where she like cartwheeled over to him and started choking him. I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, you're not something. You're, you're going to kill him. Luckily, she didn't because Liz showed up and yelled at her to stop. And I was like, whoa. Cause we haven't seen this in a while because the last time, like, it's been a while. But let's not forget, Park, she definitely has a dark side to her. Because wasn't it her fight with um, Francesca that got super messed up and super bloody? Like, the fact of the matter is showing you Park isn't to be messed with. Like, and even when it was all said and done, Alyssa's like, yeah, you know, hopefully they don't think we beat this confession out of them. It's like, you know, for her, it's like, really? You're, you're going to come at me? Like, I've seen you guys cross that line. She's like, yeah. We kind of cross that line, that gray area. Sure, it's like we get a little gray area, -ish, but we never fully like cross that line, which is interesting because because she ends up bringing up, oh, you shot the attorney general and stuff like that. And it's also like, oh, let's not forget all the other stuff that not just Liz, but even Wrestler and Haram have done. It's a whole bunch of things of like they've all crossed certain lines that mm, that's kind of more than just gray area. But even for her, it's like, yeah, but the fact is. It's one thing, but you kind of going about things your way is a byproduct of you not dealing like whatever it is that you you whatever it causes those triggers in you. You need to deal with it because obviously Liz knows what she's talking about having you know been in, you know whatever the circumstances might know because Liz is the only one that knows the truth about Park about like what it was that kind of like her hidden secret. She's literally the only one that knows. So maybe going forward, we'll finally get to know like what the hell is Park's deal. Um, I'm interested in kind of finding that all out, but uh, it was an interesting blacklister, to say the least. At the same time, there's so many other storylines going on. Uh, for one of those said storylines, is a whole situation with Reddington trying to get a shipment from like Tokyo to Houston because basically it's a car, but the car is actually filled with some stuff that is basically is like a product and it's like $12 million. Basically, this whole thing is like a test run because it's like if this passageway works out, he can make tons and tons and tons of money and not have to worry about it. It's like, man, uh, just, sh just shows you how the amazing of a criminal entrepreneur uh, Reddington is jumping at any opportunity uh, but Glenn kind of screwed the pooch on this regard because like basically a number got what well, was like a zero got replaced with an O so it got shipped somewhere else and Reddington is like okay and these are the type of people that most likely if things don't if we don't return the car and give it to them things are probably going to get bad starting with all parties involved starting with you and so <clears throat> And that was the situation of Glenn being like, because Glenn wanted more responsibility. He's like, no, nah, Reddington, you can give me, you can give me more stuff red to do, and you can count on me, and I'll come through any end. So he was supposed to go down there, get the car. And I love before Reddington left, he was like, I know this is probably a little wrong to ask this, but could I get like basically business class, just you know, you know, for my back and everything? Reddington's like, two days, get the car here by Tuesday. Um, but the fact of the matter is, oh, there's another wrench in the situation because now the vehicle is actually part of a competition to see, oh, if you hold on the longest, you get to keep the vehicle. It's one of those competitions. And Renton's like, wait, what? Especially because he had just explained to those guys, he's like, don't worry, like, I, my, my, my guy Glenn, he's on top of it. Oh, please tell me you got in trouble. Wait, what? He's like, no worries. Like, the fact is, I'm kind of in it. Like, we get breaks and stuff like that. He's like, I, I, I'm going to win this. And so... Obviously, Reddington and Denbe end up driving down there, and they see like, why the hell are there so many cops? Even I was like, worried. I was like, oh, what the hell is this about to turn into? Turns out it has nothing to do with that necessarily. It's just that one of the people participating is a cop, so like they're there to kind of rally support. I even love Glenn being like, honestly, I don't have anyone here. Like maybe Denbe, you know, you don't have to come here because I know with the cops and everything rolling around, but Denbe could come here and maybe he can rub my feet and stuff like that. It's like, but you can count on me, Reddington. I'm gonna get this done, and I'm like, okay. And I love Dimbe being like, do you want me to call his mom? And Reggie says like, no, 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 no. That'd make a bad situation worse. Uh, and I love, it's like, well, we're just going to have to handle this ourselves. Because uh, I love Dimbe being like, because I'm not going in there to rub his feet. 
Uh, so they have to find a different way. It's like, all right, we're going to get some dirt on everyone that's left participating to get this, to make this an easy wing. Because I love Red Team being like, because eventually Glenn is going to screw this up big time. And I love at the same time we have a, mon like we have a Eye of the Tiger montage and Glenn's like doing this thing. Just, you know, he's like, I of the tiger and uh this i just love this being a whole thing and it's like it's so interesting that literally this whole operation of reddington's is literally um it all comes down to glenn and that's just a funny thought all in its own it's just crazy to look at how much this glenn storyline has grown over the course of the series it's just like it's just crazy to think of just like oh now like you're so critical to one of reddington's uh, things and I'm sure he wouldn't want you to be he's like I gave you something simple to do and you screwed it up and now you're trying to fix it but I know you're going to screw it up worse and I love he's like the fact of the matter is I got my top guy on he's like your top guy yes my top guy the moment Reddington said that I laughed I was like oh like Glenn's not even second last he's literally bottom of the barrel when it comes to your people I think I like to believe he's literally last place amongst people you trust to do anything which is always so crazy it's like why does Reddington keep going back to him if it's not a situation of Glenn like in the past saying and doing stuff to manipulate Reddington because like Reddington will say something hurtful he'll act all hurt and Reddington's like oh I'm sorry I'm sorry he's like ah, I got you it's like he's done stuff like that to the point Reddington's like all right I hate you you know so it's like why work with this guy continuously to be fair Glenn it's even though he's kind of an imbecile at times he's actually really good at what he does so that's he's you know sadly even if he's at the bottom of the list he's still on the list of people Reddington you know would choose to work with and stuff like that but still and I love he's like oh Glenn is someone I'd go shoulder to shoulder to and battle you can always count on him and I even love when the guys left uh Dimbe was like that was good Red uh Red because uh you know I like to believe that but he's like I don't and uh you know it was all nice that you said, but I don't believe a word of it. And Red's like, yeah, I didn't believe it either. But it was enough to kind of get them off our case. So it's like, all right, you got some dirt on some people. So Reddington ends up meeting with uh, the priest or whatever that's also in the competition. He's the last one. And uh, he's bringing up the stuff about like, because Reddington's like, oh, he's kind of a loser. He has nothing. Like, you've won twice already, right? The fact that matters, you know how much this would mean to him, to Glenn, to win. But the pastor is like, yeah, it's all about, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's about how hard you try and he'll know how hard he tried when he walks away with second place. I'm like, that's a little douchey of a, pri uh, a priest to be saying something like that. I mean, I get it. The fact of the matter is um, Reddington is uh, offering him stuff, bribing him and he's kind of still walking. He's like, how about this and that? It's like, and then the the uh, priest is actually kind of listening. He's like, oh, like this particular vehicle. It's like, oh yeah, for you and your wife, blah, blah, blah. blah. And it's like, okay. And then it's like, when the deal goes down, it's like, ah, uh, Glenn shows up. At first, I was like, it seems like Glenn was angry. I was like, oh, is he angry? Did he find out ready to interfere? It's like, no, he didn't. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry it took me so long. They wanted to sell like tape pictures and all that. It's like, ah, uh, Glenn's none the wiser that Reddington uh, intervened and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it turns out the stuff that he was... Um, Transporting as like a, a new like form of isotope that is almost like a gas. It's not actually built into the gas of the truck. It's actually something that could actually be put into the metals and stuff like that. Because he, he thinks that the people he's selling this to are like uh, CIA because like this whole thing has like has like a half life and stuff like that. So they're breaking down the, the truck and everything because like the stuff is because even he's like, honestly, I don't know how the whole thing works. But like, because that's what this old operation was like, basically, from the be like the whole step of the operation from like the car being built up to um, the car being built up to um, it getting shipped, all of that Reddington's kind of involved in that step. So it kind of makes it easier to kind of slip stuff in because it's literally being built into the car, not just stuck inside the car. The car is being made from it. Like it's kind of made into the metal pieces of the car. So it's, it's kind of interesting his way to kind of ship stuff off. So it's, just, it's interesting like what this kind of sets up for his future business opportunities with this new pathway of kind of doing things. And Glenn's like, see, but I'm glad to know that you had faith in me, Red. Um, the fact of the matter is that you trusted me to get this done. And it's like, yeah, here, Glenn, it's your reward. I love that the car's um, license plate says, I deserve. I was like, that's neat. 
Um, I, I even love Glenn calling him R squared. I was like, I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Uh, but Glenn being so proud, it's like, oh, I'm glad you trusted me and didn't interfere. You showed you that I'm the guy that you can count on when you need something else done, Red. You know to come to me. And it's like, oh, I'm, you know, in the back of Red's eyes, he's like, oh, I'm definitely not coming to you for anything anytime soon, Glenn, unless it's absolutely necessary. So. That was a really interesting aspect of uh, today's episode in that regard. Another interesting aspect is the whole, like, LED and uh, Aram situation. Because at first I was like, can you break up? Then I was like, oh, right. I forgot. You two banged it out last episode. I was like, right, 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 right. I was like, yeah, I forgot about that. And so they're about to do the whole um, uh, skydiving. And um, I love that, like, uh, Aram had mentioned, like, uh, basically he's thinking about his semen count. And she's like, what? And he's like, when he gets nervous, like, up high like this and stuff like that, he starts thinking about his semen count. She's like, yeah, I mean, I want to be, you know, I'm concerned about your semen count and everything, too. But why under these? It is a little weird that you're bringing it up. But for him, it's like in moments like this where it's like, oh, I could potentially die. It makes him think about the fact is that he won't have any children to kind of continue on the legacy and stuff like that. And so he kind of wants children. And LED kind of wants children, too. But obviously with the current circumstances, it just she feels weird. It's like, I don't stay with my husband out of obligation or because I feel bad. It's like, because it's the right thing to do. She said there's no prenup or anything. So it's like, oh, it's like, oh. And it's just, but it, you know, it once again, the whole thing still kind of makes Aram feel weird. The fact is he shows up there to work late and everything after skydiving. Um, and he brings it up to uh, Liz about the whole thing of like, hey, if Tom had told you that he didn't want kids, would you have been with him? And so, and she's like, oh, so this is where you want to start the conversation. It's like, okay. Because it's like, because um, interestingly enough, um, I didn't even think about this until Liz pointed out. She's like, yeah, Samar didn't want kids either. But it's like, yeah, it's different because of Samar's situation being what it is and Elodie's situation being different too. So it's like, it's different circumstances for different reasons. But at the end of the day, the one commonality is you want kids. So he's like, so I pick, basically almost saying like, I pick women that don't want kids because I actually don't actually want kids. She's like, no, the fact of the matter is, what I'm saying is, Aram, you overthink things. The fact of the matter is, you're going to be with the person you're meant to be with and just kind of focus on that and kind of not think about things too much. Then there's the whole situation with Elodie's husband. He ends up right back in the hospital, which I won't lie to you immediately. I was like, did she kill him? It just crossed my mind because I was like, he just happened to get right back in the hospital. I mean, he has medical conditions and stuff like that, but I'm just kind of like, the timing's interesting. I was just like, I think, did she do something? I just couldn't help but think that. But then I was like, oh, maybe not the case. Because obviously LED's like, no, we're going to break this off and everything. And I'm like, oh, why would she do something to her husband if they're going to, if she's literally going to break it off? But Aroma's like, no, the fact of the matter is I want to be with you. He, he He's like... I, I'm looking in one direction and that's what I want. And it's like, oh, it's like, oh, it's sweet. And then immediately it's like, yeah, your husband Charles, it's like he passed. And it's like, I thought he was getting better. It's like an aneurysm that burst. And I'm like, geez. And then she's crying in his arms. But I was like, did she do something? But it's like, she was going to break up with Aram. But it's like, was it supposed to be like reverse psychology of just kind of like, did she know that Aram would kind of, she knew how to maneuver him like that or something? Well, lo and behold, what ends up happening? It's like, oh, Aram ends up finding out, oh, there is a prenup. She gets 10 million, and now it puts in his mind of like, so did she kill her husband? Which is like, huh. She is kind of the thrill seeker that she is. So it's like, she's, did she take a chance on it? Like, would she, like, that's the thing of like, is it because she does want to be with Aram, but she doesn't want to, like, is that what this has, that, I mean, because it basically undermines everything that she's ever said of like, oh, doing the right thing. It's like, no, you've always had a financial motive. And she could spin it to be like, actually, I had no idea, like, someone else was setting that up. Like, uh, someone brought that to my attention. It just happened after Charles. She might try and spin that, but it's definitely going to make things awkward because, like, you were gonna, like, you literally took the step to go, all all in with Elodie and now you find out like oh she potentially murdered her husband it's like was this always the plan was she was it like bringing you closer in just for this so that you know because now it turns into a situation of like we might kind of be dealing with like a little bit of a black widow situation of like oh like eventually like maybe she'll fall in love with someone else and kind of kill you maybe you know it's like oh you're safe for now until I mean, but then it starts big. Well, can we know the situation that led him in the, to be in the condition he's in? But then there's a part of you now retroactively being like, did she have some part to do with that? And it's like, she couldn't have. Like, it was just part of the games that they were involved in. But it's like, that might have been more her, her game. And maybe she set this all in motion. Because the whole thing is, if they get divorced or separated, she gets nothing. Him, he has to die. And obviously, it couldn't look like this is the best. I mean, obviously, with his condition and everything. But that's the thing. Why now? So that's what makes me think she does care for... Um, 
she cares for Aram, but then we might be borderlining between like some fatal attraction and some Black Widow. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know what, to, you know, what to make of that. So it's definitely going to be interesting where the hell that storyline goes. At the same time, we have Liz looking into some stuff. She gets a text being like, oh, looking for Mr. X. I'm like, what the hell is that all about? Uh, apparently, she was working with uh, some FBI people to look into somebody to find someone, but they couldn't help her. So she kind of goes off book and ends up getting help from a um, off the books kind of P.I., uh, and then she kind of gets like a secret stash of money because I guess it's like you don't want to use your own money because you don't want anything connected to this person to trace back to you. So it might as well use some like money you had hidden away. And then we see a passport. It's a passport of Agnes's, but it, obviously it's a fake passport and everything. And she's like, oh, what is that? It's like your daddy told me just to kind of always have something in case it rains. I'm like, so if, if shit kind of hits the fan, she can run with Agnes at any point. So I was like, that's interesting which i think would all i mean uh, it's been enough time but part of me is like you were in the news you were on the fbi's most wanted list for a while like reddington i mean but even then like even though reddington was on the fbi's most wanted list still is fact is and it's even with the trial and everything that went down last yeah last season uh even with all that there's still going to be plenty of people that don't know what Reddington looks like. What don't, don't you know know him by name, but not by face and stuff like that. So that's a whole thing. So I was about to say like it'd be kind of hard for you to be on the run, wouldn't? I mean Agnes, sure, but I mean not unless the whole point is to make Agnes disappear, which obviously is a whole complicated cycle in that family, considering what uh, Katarina had to do with Liz, and now I mean Liz has had to do it multiple times with Agnes anyway. So to kind of still be down that lane. I think it's meant to be a situation of they both run, not just, but you know, you never know what the circumstances or the situation might be that would lead to that, that might have to shift the plan and make it so that not just Liz goes with Agnes, maybe just Agnes by herself. Who knows? But, um, uh, we, uh, find out at the end, cause we see her meeting with her, uh, PI and it's like super shady and off the books type of thing of like, yeah, showing you just how far Liz is willing to go with this whole situation. But then it turns out the person she's looking for is Elio, and it's like, oh, okay, so I'm assuming you're looking for him for your mom, because obviously he has information that your mom needs, and now there's also the whole, well, there's also the thing of like, well, who the hell is Reddington if he's not really Elio, because you thought like, oh, obviously this isn't my uh, dad, but uh, my real dad is dead, but my uh, mom trusted him. This is her best friend. But now it's like, this is the guy that betrayed her, actually, that there's more to the story. So obviously he holds the secret to her getting what she needs to kind of escape the trouble that she's in. So it's Liz coming at it from that angle. She coming at it from like trying to figure out who Reddington really is angle. She actually coming at it from both angles. I'm really curious to see what that whole thing is and what kind of answer she's going to get because Reddington probably made it damn sure that Frank, you know, Ilio, uh, ended up disappearing for good and making it super hard to find him. But hence why she's doing this super off the record so that, like, that doesn't become an issue. So we'll see how that all ends up playing out because that's definitely going to be uh, interesting. Uh, but, uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and Goodbye.